My favorite movie from that era, though, would probably be RoboCop. I don't know if you ever watched that movie. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. The, that one, that one, I really liked, but. Uh, the beginning of that movie is is too brutal for me. I can't watch it. His arm gets blown off. His arm stuff. gets blown off. Yeah, that's. <laughs> I don't think I've watched it since. Uh, but it was a great. I, I have. I have watched it since. But that that kind of. But that's a filmmaking technique. I think that works really well if the director's good because what that does to me I don't know if it's the same for everybody but when Peter Weller's getting all shot up by the bad guys you know and they're laughing as they're shooting him and he's lying on the floor and he's just getting he's getting pounded to bits with the bullets and like you say his arm gets shot off and stuff and I'm going oh my god and my adrenaline in this in the movie theater my adrenaline went through the roof and I'm like oh I don't know if I'm going to be able to stay in this movie it's going to be like this and then after that, it's it's it, it changes tone entirely, and it becomes about the technology and all of that kind of stuff. And this this man rediscovering his his humanity and and and, and all of that kind of stuff. And that adrenaline burst that I had then becomes the director uses that. Yeah, I don't know if you've ever had that before, but the director uses it and pushes you along into the most wonderful kind of revelation about the meaning of the movie whereas other films I saw around that time Blue Velvet was one of them and Young Guns was another did similar things but just left me completely adrift just left me with this adrenaline rush and I was like oh, I, don't, I don't like this yeah so I, I, I really I really did admire Robocop for that and there's a funny, funny we should talk about it because my friend's currently playing the game that's linked to that movie uh, Ro- it's the latest Robocop game. I think it's called Something City or something like that. I don't know if you've if you've heard it or played it, but he's playing that, and I played it a few months ago, and that was a great game. You know, stomping around this Robocop, shooting the shit out of stuff. It's great, really good. I'm gonna check that out because I played the original Robocop game on Nintendo that came out shortly after that movie, so I, I I'm familiar with that one. But um, I should check that out because I've like I love the Robocop. I'll give you some in- inside uh, insight on that movie too that I'm, I'm lucky to have because. Um, there's a girl I went to high school with who uh, I became friend. I, I came became friends with her because the first time I met her, she was wearing a Pink Floyd The Wall t-shirt. Right. <laughs> and uh, and um, we had to do, uh, we, we were taking the same class, the, the same class where we met each other was called English Media in, um, in, uh, in high school. And part of the uh, end of the, the semester, we had to do some project. I forget what the requirements were for the project, but she, um, she had an uncle that was in the f- film business. He was a special special effects like Ooh. artist specialist, and his big thing. Well, his biggest thing was he designed the um, in the I, I don't know I don't know which movies which X Men movies, but in the first X Men movie for sure, um, there's this girl I forget her name Mystique or something like that, and she's oh. got this blue yeah, skin yeah. tight suit. Yeah, yeah. He designed that suit like in the material that like he invented the material that the suits made out of and everything, and it was like apparently groundbreaking what he did there, but. Before that, his claim to fame was being the special effects guy for RoboCop. Wow. And he did all, like, he designed the blowing up the arm scene, all the gore, and all, everywhere there was blood or gore in that movie, that was his thing. And, and she was interviewing him, like, inside of his studio where he has, like, all these props from different movies and everything. And, and, um, and that was, so she brought this film of her interviewing her uncle in the studio, in his studio, was part of it, was, was her project. And, and they were, he was talking about RoboCop at one point I was getting all excited because I'm like that's like one of my favorite movies I can't believe we're talking about this guy and and he was talking about the reason why he was the the gore in that movie was so impactful is he's terrified of blood like the sight of blood makes him want to puke mm. and so so the way he would so when he does those kind of gory effects is he makes himself feel as ill as possible like that's his goal <laughs> that's his barometer <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Well. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's why he was so good at that stuff. Is that he just because he had a personal relationship to it. It wasn't like, hey, what could make people freak out? Like he didn't look at it like a, like a like a shock value for him. It was literally like, okay, if I'll go until I can't do it anymore, and then that's when I that's when I know I'm, I've achieved something. Well, he got me. That's and for sure. He definitely got me. I, I I was I was in bits at that point. But then it was the, the movie. The movie redeemed itself. A- after that, the after that, the sort of gore. There's there's plenty of sort of. You know, gunshots and bullets and flying about and stuff and pe- bits flying off people, but they're all bad guys. So that was fine, you know, and that that yeah. was okay. But the 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 Robocop film, there's there's a there's a couple of quite recent sort of interviews with Peter Weller where he's he's at uh, uh, some kind of uh, fan convention or something like that, and he's talking about uh, the suit 
and how it was complete. It wasn't doable. It, he 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 had this. They had this thing that he couldn't move in and he couldn't make work at all. And it it it, it nearly it nearly ended. The movie nearly ended at that point before before they even started shooting because they were due to start shooting on the Monday and this thing wasn't ready on the on the the Friday, you know. But they eventually managed. I can't remember exactly how it was that they managed to to make it work, but. He said he was trying to be he was trying to be too human, and it was who's it's who's the director of that? It's uh, Verhoeven, is it Paul Verhoeven? Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah, and he he said just just be wooden, just be wood, just just stomp and be wooden, and he found that really really difficult to do. But eventually pulled it off, of course. And the the, the movie is a the movie is a classic. That's no doubt about that. Yeah, it's great. <laughs> They they remade the movie I think sometime in the last decade at some point like they did a reboot of it and I remember being offended at the, even the idea that why would I understand rebooting a movie that's got class classic appeal but didn't quite hit the mark but that's a masterpiece like you don't it's the same reason you don't redo Wizard of Oz you don't redo like Gone with the Wind you don't redo oh they, nothing nothing will stop them these days if they want if they think there's money in do, redoing Gone with the Wind they'll you're right they'll make an AI version of Clark Gable and just bung him up there maybe you're right yeah. Well, I mean, you're not. You're completely right. Obviously, it's, money is the motivating factor. Yeah, if there's money, if there's money in it, they'll do it. <laughs> they'll do it about it. Yeah, they'll get the rights. And it's too bad because, because you're right. Because I mean, like a classic doesn't always do well financially because people don't know what's good until it's already happened, right? Whereas you, <laughs> yeah. if, you re, if you remake a, if you remake a classic, you're riding on the coattails of its of its notoriety. Right? Well, the one I always remember is Blade Runner. It didn't do well upon release. No. And I remember going to see it. I took the afternoon off work to go and see it and sat in the cinema by myself with a half bottle of vodka <laughs> <laughs> because I was young and stupid and I thought that's what you would do. And I remember just being completely blown away by it. You know, uh, at that time, that kind of imagery, you couldn't get it anywhere but the cinema. I think a lot of young people forget or they don't know the way that imagery evolved over time. We're so used now to having high fidelity imagery wherever we want and in everything yeah the only way you could see those kind of images you know that that you know on a 70 millimeter print on a big screen you know a 50 foot screen you know that 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 opening section where it flies over the city and oh and that music jeez i remember i remember just my mouth being open you know watching that movie and and thinking you know it must this will be the biggest movie ever and it was only recently that i found out that it was it was a it was a bomb well not a bomb but it didn't do as well as they thought it would do at the time but of course now it's a classic <laughs> again <laughs> that was that was vangelis right the music I think? it was yes that saxophone yeah. at the start oh jeez, yeah gosh <laughs> oh it gives me goosebumps just thinking about it what a great what a great movie well, it's funny, you know, that was a movie that I didn't watch until a handful of years ago. I never, I, because I thought it had a stupid name. Like, I thought it was a movie about, like, guys playing futuristic hockey or something. <laughs> like, Only a Canadian would go there. <laughs> <laughs> Probably, you know. Blades, and, uh, blades, and, it must be, it must be hockey. <laughs> you know, and I, and for some reason, like, I didn't, Harrison Ford's always kind of rubbed me the wrong way. Like, I didn't, I never really liked, liked Star Wars that much. I never liked um, Raiders of the Lost Ark. I found those movies they never landed with me. I thought it was it was all like flash and bang. The stories never it felt they felt generic to me. Mm. You know, and again for the same reasons. I imagine cuz like when you watch the Star Wars in the 90s growing up, you don't you, you can't appreciate it for what it was in the 70s, right? Like it doesn't cuz it doesn't it doesn't compare to like visually to it, it doesn't it doesn't outpace you know like like Terminator. I think would blow out you know, blows any fucking Star Wars movies out of the water as far as special effects and visual pleasings. You know, so yeah, for me, this this didn't do it. Yeah, Star Wars was the was the the first time I remember that thing. You know, that the 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 thing that differentiated Star Wars is a very simple thing to do, I think, but it was so effective. Was that science fiction movies up to that point? Um, all of the sets were neat and clean you know everything if it was white it was white if it was black it was black if it was blue it was blue and star wars put wear and dirt on everything and that had okay uh, th that made it real you know and it, so so yes the story is generic and the actors are acting and all of that kind of stuff and you know the the ewoks are just little guys in, in dressed in fur and yeah 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 but the impact it had at the time was i remember coming out after the after the Death Star scene at the end, you know, where the where the the, the Tie Fighters are 
whizzing along in the canyon with all the fire and stuff. I came out of this. I came out of the cinema. I've watched that. I just how was that? How, how did they do that? That's amazing. And everybody was talking about it. It was one of those films that you know you couldn't ignore when it came out. It was it was so huge. Um, yeah. It was, uh, but yeah, I can understand. You know, watching it watching it later. Yeah, it would it wouldn't have the same impact. But it was a watershed. And then everything after that. Everything after that was grimy and gritty, and <laughs> you know. So it did change things. And the thing I wish I knew about Blade Runner before I, years earlier, I guess, was that I didn't realize it was based off of um, "Do Androids Dream of Electric Sheep" by mm-hmm. Philip K. Dick, which mm-hmm. is a, a book I absolutely love. Mm-hmm. Right. So when I finally did watch Blade Runner, is that your favorite uh, Philip K. Dick book? Do you think? Um, probably not. I've read a handful. You think it's a good one? It is pretty good. Like I, there's a lot of things in the book that, well, it's it's F- Philip K. Dick's writing style always grabs me. Like it's, uh, you know, um, so there's something about like that book that, like the beginning of the book stands out in my mind more than anything, just because it was like he had to really wrestle with this like foreign concept that he pulls you into in a way that like I've never, like the way he writes. I mean, I know he's not alone in this. A lot of guys write this way, but there's something about the way he writes is like he, it's like he does he doesn't. He, he takes for granted the fact that you're not living in his head. You know, like, it's like he does, there's no warm-up to anything. You're just sort of like, oh, here I am, and I'm experiencing this strange thing. You know, and, a, and like, my favorite sci-fi movies are like that, like Demolition Man and Robocop. Like, there's no warm-up to it. You're just like, okay, I'm in this bizarre dystopian whatever, you know. Um, and and I, th- I don't think the movie did necessarily that great of a job representing the book. I think it, it's no. kind of like The Shining by, by Kubrick. The Shining by Kubrick is nothing like The Shining by Stephen King. Yeah. But it's got elements of it, right? So that was, I think, part of the reason. Like, it would have been, if I knew it was based on the book, I may have gone into it with a little more excitement. But at the same time, um, like, I was like, I was almost halfway through the movie before I realized. I'm like, I know this story. Right. Suddenly, suddenly <laughs> all, the, all the dominoes yeah. start to fall, and you're like, oh, wait a minute. This is something else. Yeah. You know, and like a, a comparable thing to me, which I did. You ever watch that movie called Starship Troopers? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. That's a great movie as well. So I watched that movie as a kid. That's, I thought a, that's it was another great. Paul Verhoeven one, isn't it? It might be. Actually, I think it is. Yeah, it probably it is. is. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's based off of a book called Starship Troopers by Robert Heinlein. Robert Heinlein, yes. Right. Yeah. It's one of his. It was one of his best books, and I read the book Starship Troopers, and. And then rewatch the movie, and then I was like, "This is an abomination compared to the book." Mm. You know, once so so it's amazing how much a good book can almost destroy a movie that is otherwise good if you if you separate the two. You know, but yeah. the thing about the movie, yeah. the star the Starship Troop movie, Troopers movie, though I did like about it is it's it makes some very subtle nods towards the the book in a way that um, are very clever without actually. Because like the the movie is about like these soldiers like blowing up bugs on planets like mm-hmm. you know but the the book is about discipline and about about how uh, how society should probably run in, in a much different way than how we run it you know mm. um, and so like the 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 action sequences about blowing up bugs and being in war is like five percent of the book maybe ten mm-hmm. percent of the book whereas the whole movie focuses on that right yeah. so it's it's a very different experience but the, the thing but. that's great about the movie I don't know I don't know if it's in the book because I either haven't read the book or it's been decades since I did um, and I don't have it in my in my wee library through there but the great thing about the the film is that you're drawn into all these characters and things you know and you're you're kind of with them and especially they've got I don't remember the actress's name so I, I, I'm sorry about that but uh, she's really she's really a gorgeous looking Young Denise young, Richards. Denise Richards, a young, a gorgeous-looking right. young lady, and the the user in that way, you know, the the user that it's quite blatant the way they use her. There's there's a couple of nude scenes and things that are uh, uh, get the juices flowing. Shall we say? <laughs> is that is that? Yeah. Can you say that sort of thing these days? I don't give a fuck. Um, yeah, I'm fine with that. But you, you so you're into these characters, and they all they kind of differentiate after they come out of the the training school, and they all go in the different ways and all that kind of stuff. And there's She's the pilot, isn't she? And and there's that brilliant scene where she's taking the ship out, and it's it's something that's never been captured by any no Star Trek film does it, no Star Wars film does it, where she's steering the ship with a joystick, I think, and you can see the 
the stars moving as she and it's brilliantly done and it's just oh wow that's what it would be like to steer a fucking starship except it wouldn't be but okay um <laughs> so it's it's great from that point of view but the you follow these characters and then there's the there's the there's the point where they're uh trying to get something out of the queen and the, he puts a probe into the queen's brain or something like that do you know the bit i mean and yeah. at some point it occurs to you it's like that it's like that uh uh that Badil and skinner where the i don't know if you if you've seen that but there's a there's a sketch show called Badil and skinner where they it's the two nazis the two ss guys and they're just they're they're, they're out in out in the dark and they're smoking and one says to the other Hans, are we the bad guys? <laughs> and as you realise, you suddenly realise the Starship Troopers, the characters you love, they're the bad guys. They're the guys that are exterminating the innocent bugs, you know, who are just trying to protect their their nest, you know. And that that's a wonderful, I think that's brilliant, you know, you, 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 you bring us in and you make us so sympathetic then you realise, oh fuck, I've become a Nazi as well. Well, that's funny, I didn't pick up on that uh, maybe because I, I first watched it I was a kid the second time I watched it I, I was uh, I was I already read the book because the bugs the bugs need to die <laughs> yeah, yeah I don't think in the they, movie they, they, I, I'm not sure in the movie that they do I, I don't, I'm sure I'm sure we're the ones invading them I think what, it's in is the, that right maybe I got that wrong in, in the book it's, well in the movie they don't touch too much on like the it's kind of you, the movie kind of takes off in the middle of the war mm-hmm. like the war is already in the middle right so in the book the bugs aren't even known like in the book it's these guys are just in the military and the bugs destroy like a part of earth they show up and just they they attack buenos aires right. and wipe it off the map right right and then now now all of a sudden life is different like every every college kid they finish school and then they go to war like there's no yeah that's like a man- mandatory draft for every human being now like you there's no escaping it but that's the bit that verhoven picked up on is that I think I think the allegory is what would it have been like to be in to be a normal caring person in Nazi Germany at the time? Yeah, when you could be convinced to go off and persecute people and and you know go off to war to change the world and all that kind of stuff. I think that's what he was going for. I think I might be completely wrong, but if you ever watch it again, maybe maybe you'll. St- <laughs> you I can, should. You can make your own make your own determination. 